What is the biggest auto accessory customizing fabrication show on this earth, on this planet, in this galaxy? It is found stateside in the state of Nevada, in the city of Las Vegas. It is the one and only Amasima, baby. So this is about like my fourth time here at SEMA and every year it's getting better and better. Awesome, off the hook, off the hook. This is a place that is kind of setting trends. It's uh, innovative, it's the workmanship and the craftsmanship is absolutely first rate. I am standing next to the world renowned and famous Pro drifter, rally cross driver, TV presenter, on air personality, as you said here, and just all star super guy, Tanner Frost. How are you doing? I'm doing great, man. I'm super blessed to be standing next to you. I hope you're having a wonderful experience here at SEMA. SEMA is awesome. You know, you get 200,000 people coming just uh, who love cars. And, Absolutely. you know, there's a lot of question of like if the car culture is still healthy. And then you come to SEMA and you see all of this craziness going on and you know that it's living well. Speaking about craziness, my boy Vic definitely had his work cut out for him. I mean, how on earth does one choose which cars to profile? Check this out. There is hundreds if not thousands of aftermarket modified cars but this thing really grabbed my attention specifically why because it's got six wheels we got russell yeah russell tell us a little bit about this bolt well we started with the 2016 jeep wrangler we cut it and extended it 36 inches uh, hold on hold on you cut the jeep in half yeah we cut it clean in half i mean we totally gutted it took everything apart 36 inches added to it we hand built every part for it Silly question, but usually there's a diff in the back of a rear wheel drive. Now you've got two axles, so do both of them have diffs? Do both of them push? Yes, both of them have di uh, diffs. The front diff has a pass through, so we took power in and brought it out to feed the rear power. Tell me, what is the retail of something like this here in the States? Retail for this particular model with the Hellcat, you're looking at about 300 starting point. 300,000 times, currently 15, it's a good amount of money. Yep, you can say that again. It works out to approximately 4.6 million rand. Yo. With SEMA being the biggest tuning and automotive show in the world, Vic decided to test the locals' knowledge about South African car culture. Let's see if they can pronounce this word. Kashishi. It's a Kashishi. Is that right? Uh, Kashishi. <laughs> Kashishi. Kashi. 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 So the correct pronunciation is Kusheshe. What is that? So Kusheshe, it's like a, an old E30 BMW from the 80s and 90s. Okay. It's a cult classic back home. Yeah, I thought you were sneezing, but okay. Kusheshe! <laughs> Bless me. So we were just cruising through the outside parking lot and we came across something that looked kind of familiar back home to all the fans in South Africa. And believe it or not, Frederick Fulhoun, I'm going to say that like in a real Afrikaans accent, Frederick Fulhoun, all the way from South Africa. My man, you here. Thank you very much, we've made it. Wow. 
first and foremost, please tell us how you got this car all the way from South Africa to Las Vegas. Tell us about your journey. Tell us how this even came about. First, you have to get, get like to SEMA a year before in advance to come and work your sponsors and okay. people that will support you, give you a spot at SEMA. And then, yeah, we were lucky to be chosen, fortunate enough to be part of a radical bolt off drive off. Okay. We have to drive 1,400 miles. So the starting point was in Lincoln. I offloaded in uh, Alamore, and then we have to start there. Tell us a little bit more about the eccentric art pieces that you have attached to this car to make it uniquely South African. Because the old school safari, I started with the horns, we made out of metal, and then I got the binoculars that I found on eBay and all the pawn shops in South Africa. I think I robbed a few pawn shops. Uh, world War One and World War II binoculars. I found a very unique piece. I was walking towards the rear of the car, and there's like a brass compass going, I think it's your petrol yeah, That's my petrol cap, yes. I, I tried to, well, you need some direction. To get direction, you need fuel. So I put the two together. Okay. So that's why I use the compass for my fuel caps. And then, yeah. It's a safari, so I had to put a big five on the back. It, it kind of reminds me of uh, Crocodile Dundee in a way. You know, it's you know, it's got that safari vibe to it. I've heard of the safari, but I've never been to South Africa. I think that would be a blast if I could take this on a safari myself and my buddies or whoever. Taking this off-roading in general would be a lot of fun. Well, the fun didn't stop there. Vic still had one more surprise for us. So, the cars just keep getting better. I'm chilling with my boy Chris. Some of you guys are already following his account. He's just built this awesome Datsun 240Z fitted. And I hope you're listening really, really closely with an M5 V10 motor just for that fun factor. Chris, how are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm fantastic, man. We saw this car yesterday. We've been trying to track you down. This car is just amazing. Tell us all about your journey, how it started, how long it's taken you. Oh man, well okay, it took four months. Um, how did it start? It just started a brainstorming session, you know, having a couple beers, saying like, I want to put the S85 engine in something cool. I wanted to build a 240Z as well, and I also wanted to build a car for SEMA. So then we thought, how are we going to do all those three things together? Two frame chassis, we had to start from the ground up, chassis, throw the engine in the chassis, find out a way to put that body on top of that chassis and put it all together. Clean, because we knew we were going to a show, but we also, after the show, it's a car. It's not just a show car, it's gonna be used, you know? So we're on air ride suspension, so we can get over bumps, you know, all that good stuff. Tell us about the transmission that you decided to couple this uh, motor with. Oh, it's the stock transmission. Oh, really? Yeah, so I wanted to keep the computers happy right off the bat. We didn't have a lot of time, four months, we didn't have time to deal with a lot of tuners or anything else like that. Um, you know, with an engine like this and all that torque, just a little bit of a wrong pedal, yeah. you screw up, right? And if you've seen BMW drivers drive, they use their traction control, you know, a lot, right? So we keep it on this car, then we get it on the drag strip, we can just pop through those gears and just run it really fast. So before I go, there's a sport back home, it's called spinning. It's got a lot to do with BMW, the old E30 box shapes. So it's similar to your, um, like, ghost riding or burnouts. Okay. Uh, you've seen that? Is this the one that? where they're sitting on the roof? You see, South Africa, we are getting you noticed. I want you, I want you, you to say known. that again. You guys are known. You got that. Of course we're known. We South Africa, man. Well, Vic showed them some of our spinning videos, and this is what they had to say. <laughs> this is rad. I don't know how many laws you guys have back home, but we got a lot here that make you not be able to do that stuff. Yeah, it's something I would never do. No, you guys are crazy. You guys are mental. I knew this place was crazy. I can't wait to come visit. We came, we conquered, and we walked. And walked, and walked a lot. We averaged 24 kilometers per day just browsing through the halls of SEMA 2018. We hope you enjoyed the coverage. I'm going home to rest. My calf muscles are sore, my little toe is sore, my big toe is sore, my whole body's sore.
for tuning accessories and more on the local scene, AutoStyle has you covered.